Hello, my name is Richard Height, and today I'd like to, I've had a, a number of, of people that have emailed me about memory issues and the inability to concentrate and how it is, is disabling to them in their lives and put them in a very fearful space. This is something that is uh, very uh, near and dear to uh, me because uh, it's a very common phenomenon in my family um, where memory just kind of goes out the window at age 40-ish or so to the point where to the point where one forgets things that would just be obvious to other people. And to the point where one starts to become very, very anxious about what one will and will not forget. And it doesn't seem to have anything to do with what you value. So you might forget something that you really, really value. I recently um, saw an article actually sent to me by a family member of a nurse practitioner who accidentally killed her child because of memory, uh, lack of memory. She was, uh, she described a type A personality. Very, very busy with her practice. Her husband got sick, who her husband normally took the child to, the young child toddler, I guess, to daycare, but he couldn't. So she said, I'll take her to daycare, something that she almost never has to do. It's not part of her routine. And that she, she put the kid in the back of the car, as law says you should. And after putting the car, the child in the car got in the car and started driving. And within a few minutes, just completely, the child was quiet. Forgot the child was there and drove to work. And uh, got out of the car, went into work, worked all day long, came, got finished with her job, came out in the evening and found her child there in the back next to death. Rest, uh, you know, immediately ran in and screamed. And her coworkers helped her and tried to re save the child. They brought her to the hospital and the child died some hours later. And she had had no memory. Nothing had spiked in her mind. Oh, I'm taking my kid to daycare. And just as soon as, as soon as her mind started that, you know, anticipating what was going to happen the day and getting into the work, you know, as she's driving, whatever that would, was going on in her brain just overwhelmed and she'd completely forgot about her child. For people that have good memory, you cannot um, imagine, maybe to you, this is just unimaginable. You might just assume she did not love her child. What a terrible mother she must be. She should go to prison. And, and they're trying to put her in prison for this. But those of you who have memory issues, who tend to hyper-focus as well, maybe this story hits you deeply because you realize, oh my God, that really could happen to me. I really could do that. And if the timing is right, amount of stress is right, insufficient sleep, you know, has been happening for a long enough period of time. If all the elements line up, this could happen to anybody. So that's a terrifying thought. I remember when I was a teacher in Japan, going through an experience where I was so overwhelmed with pressures of life, some of the visions I'd had. I was in a uh, fight, flight, fear mode for extended period of time because I was fearful of the uh, societal collapse and all that sort of stuff. I just made a video about, about that um, earlier today. So check that out if you're, if you're interested. But it put me into a very unhealthy, stressed out space memory just went out. I remember one day I came into work. It was midterms or finals. I don't remember uh, which it was, but 
I, and I, we'd, I'd already given the tests and, re, and collected them, and so the next day I came in to grade them. Sat down at my desk and there, the, pulled out the tests and looked at the first student. Uh, we were, um, I was a homeroom teacher for the third grade, first class in the third grade. So it was 3A. And I look at 3A number one. And uh, I don't want to say her actual name, but anyway. Wada was the name, uh, the last name. And I, I didn't know this kid. Who is this kid? I, this should be in my homeroom class. I just got to know this kid. I don't recognize this name. That's strange. Hmm. So I flipped maybe somebody else. I thought maybe another teacher had kind of mixed it in with mine by accident. I checked the next one. Number two, Kino. What? I don't know this person either. That's weird. Number three, didn't know that person either. Went through the whole thing, didn't know anybody. Well, if this was my homeroom class, I'd been with these kids for years. I mean, in middle school, so the three years. And as I was the main English conversation teacher and a total studies teacher in that, in my school, there were very few kids in, in, in my junior high, in my middle school that I didn't know. I'd been with them for three years in one form or another. And I loved my students like they were my own children. I cared deeply for them. So I, I but I couldn't remember these kids. And I thought it was kind of maybe someone was playing a joke on me. I remember that was the first impression because it just this didn't make any sense to me. So I get out my grading book, which is locked in my desk. I know nobody could tamper with it. And I look at my homeroom students list. And first student is Wada. Second student is Kino. In my own handwriting. So I, I, suddenly, re I suddenly realize that I couldn't remember my own students at all. I just they're just names on a paper. I couldn't remember the faces that having having ever met them. And I, I remember the immediate judgment I had on myself about what a terrible teacher I am, I am that I could forget my own students. How, you know, I must not love them. You know, what a terrible teacher. I and mean, I just I just broke down. I mean, I, I had a breakdown right there on the spot. I was in the teacher's room. The other teachers there I just had a breakdown. I remember a friend of mine off to the left behind me who didn't see my face. I was kind of, you know, looking down, trying to hide my tears, came up behind me to ask me a question, and I just ignored him. I completely, I couldn't even look up at him. I just ignored him. And he, he got offended and left, and I don't think he ever figured out what happened to me. I maybe, maybe a week later, you know, someone probably made an announcement that I was having issues or something, I don't know. But I, I got up, I put my tests away, I got up and just, I didn't tell anybody. And I just walked out of the school. I knew who I was. And I knew, I, I could think of a few very close friends, teachers of mine at the school. I knew who they were. That's about it, two or three people. And it was, it was horrifying. Uh, anyway, I walked out of the school in a daze. I could remember how to get home somehow. I could remember how to get home. I knew who I was. I knew who my wife was. I called her, told her what was going on, and, and I, I just came home. I asked her to call the school and tell them what had happened to me so they wouldn't just worry, and she did. So I made my way home, and I stayed away from school for about a week. I called my father. I called my parents, actually, and told him the situation, and my father had told me that the same thing had occurred to him, that he had gotten so, they said it was just stress. It was too much stress and some short circuits, and, and that you just need to take a rest and then you come back, and, and that's what happened. It took three or four days and memory started to come back. But I remember maybe about the second day, memory hadn't returned yet, I remember having the realization that even though I couldn't remember almost anything of my life, I was totally dysfunctional. I mean, I, I couldn't remember sequences of things that I needed to do or things that I had done. I'd walk into a room, I wouldn't know why I went there. It was just like it was a terribly dysfunctional state. So I was in panic for a while because you can't survive that way and you know it. 
But at some point, maybe about the second, third day, I had a realization that regardless of, of a lack of memory, I was still me. I mean, whatever function, whatever the deepest thing within was still there. It just, I just couldn't function. But just knowing that being able to be in touch with that deepest thing allowed me to relax into the process and the memory came back. If one was not in touch with that deepest thing within that, that's beyond identity, one would be stuck in the sense of self and then when memory is gone, who you are is diminished. All that you know is diminished and that's going to put you in a very fearful state. And that's not going to help. That's not going to bring memory back. That's just more stress. One has to be able to let go and relax into the most fundamental, which is beyond identity. Now, if we're having a problem with brain chemistry, I'm not a scientist or a doctor, so you know, take it for what it is. But if you're having trouble with brain chemistry specifically, you know, maybe there's some damage in the brain, you know, concussions or genetic. In my family, it's clearly something genetic. Um, relaxing into all that is isn't necessarily going to turn that around. The body will decay and break down. Memory will decay and break down at some point for some people. It's not a statement against your awakening. It's not a statement against you. It's just that is just what's happening. The body is changing. And it may be changing in a way that's not functional. There are ways that... Uh, to turn it around, meditation can help. If you're right-handed, start doing things with your left hand. Become at least as good with, a, with activities with your left hand as you are with your right. That will really help memory a lot. Start eating with your left hand. Brush your teeth with your left hand if you're right-handed. If you're left-handed, do it with your right hand. Um, start doing physical activities. You know, throw a ball with your off hand punch and kick with your off hand. Start doing everything with the opposite side so that your brain is now stimulated to create um, new connections for memory from a different perspective. And that can help a lot. Another thing, a very simple thing, which I found to be very helpful in my search for memory is a product. I don't normally like to endorse products, but at least for me, this helped a lot, and um, it seems, based on the reviews I've read, that has helped a lot of people. So I do recommend this, um, just for caveat, um, not everybody will handle a supplement the same way. So for some people, this may not work at all, or um, I've, I, I know somebody who it made them sick to their stomach. But, um, but for a lot of people, this, this helps a lot. It's called, a product called Alpha Brain. I wonder if you can see it, Alpha Brain, and um, this is various herbs and things in there, which um, it's one of the few products, maybe the only product that's actually been tested scientifically and shown to produce a result. What I've noticed is that it's helped me to remember time, and so appointments um, seems to help a lot with uh, recall of words. Dreams, memory of dreams, uh, helps a lot with that. Whereas before, I didn't necessarily remember a lot of my dream content. Um, after taking Alpha Brain just a few days, it was like the dreams were super vivid and clear. They could be so vivid that, that you cannot tell the difference between them and in, in normal, quote unquote, reality, which is in itself an important lesson. So this is very, very beneficial. I may put a link on my website because I. I'm signed up with, with them, you have to kind of register. But if I give a link through my account, you'll get a discount for, for getting Alpha Brain if you feel so inclined to do that. I get a discount and you get a discount, win-win for everybody. Um, so I will see about getting that on my website. Uh, I may put a new link up on my website, uh, or maybe just recommendations. How's that, recommendations. And so it'll just be it's like for products that I found or techniques or methods or whatever, things that I found to be useful, could be even books and stuff like that, that, um, that would be potentially helpful for you and your path in your life.
So anyway, that's alpha brain. Just remember, you are not memory. The most fundamental you is not memory. Memory only allows function in the world. That, that's very important. Most all of your values in, are tied up in your function in the world. And so if memory goes and your values are tied up in, the function, in your functionality in the world, suddenly you're going to fall into a deep, deep anxiety and depression. When we find that most fundamental value, that which is connected to all that is, the stickiness of the f values of functionality become less. They don't cause the depression and anxiety. They don't have the sting that they would otherwise have. There may be a little bit, but it's, it's much less intense. And the more our value goes to the fundamental, the less intense is the anxiety and depression as a result of losing memory or function in the world. Same thing could happen if you're very you know physically robust person and have always relied on your ability physical physically and then you you get up you paralyzed or something kind of injury happens that removes a certain functionality that you are highly identified with as a human being you're going to go through anxiety and depression because that's a value to you and that value equals who who and what you are so we need to start to create a that little bit of space between those values and who and what we are don't identify with things you're not your memories. You're not your knowledge, nor are you your capabilities. Look to that which is most fundamental, that which transcends all of those things. Okay, thank you so much. I hope this helps. Take care. Bye-bye.